Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Lydia of Lydia Naomi Patterns and I create sewing patterns and sewing content for everybody online and I'm super excited to collaborate with Nomi by Mimi G with my new pattern. I have two styles, so there's the short sleeve. This one gives sort of a more 50s vibe, a vintage vibe, and then there is the flange which gives kind of like a more edgy modern vibe and then there's a really flared paneled skirt that i just love it's super cute and fun and it's a really comfortable dress i'm gonna be wearing it all summer long so without further ado let's get started for style a you will need pieces 1 to 14. piece 2 is cut on fold and you only need to cut one Piece 11 is also cut on fold and you need to cut two main fabric and one fusible interfacing. For piece 12, in addition to the two main pieces you need to cut, you also need two fusible interfacing pieces. Piece 14 is a guide for the buttonhole placement when the garment is complete, so you don't need to cut it out of fabric. All other pieces are cut too. And I am using a mauve linen for style A. For style B, the only piece you don't need is piece 13, which is the sleeve. And I'm using a beige cotton shirting for style B. Mark every single notch and dot on the pattern piece. If you don't, you will add unnecessary difficulty to the sewing process, and we don't want that. Make sure you take a look at the back of the pattern envelopes for sizes and notions, and read through the instruction booklet provided, especially the glossary of terms if you're unfamiliar with paper patterns. The seam allowance for this pattern is 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters, unless otherwise mentioned. We're going to start by interfacing. Start by applying fusible interfacing to the wrong side of the front facing, piece 14, then to one of the collar pieces, piece 11, and they should look like this. Stay stitch the upper edge of the bodice front, piece 1, from shoulder to center front. Also sew a pair of large basting stitches along the base of the bodice between notches, so that you can gather this area. And you're actually supposed to clip the corner of the stay stitch for the collar application. I forgot to do this at this point, but as long as it's done before applying the collar, it will be fine. Do the exact same along the neckline and hem to the back bodice. We will adjust the gathers to match the skirt later. At this point, you want to overlock the shoulders and sides of the front and back bodice pieces. And if you're doing style B, the armholes will be finished with bias binding. So you will need to remove a quarter inch or six millimeters around each armhole to prepare for later. Next, place bodice back with the right side of the fabric to the bodice front and sew the shoulders and the sides together. For style B, I recommend leaving the sides open because it will be easier to apply the flange. I ended up sewing in the side seams on style B, but I removed them later when applying the flange, as you will see. Whichever seams you sew, finish by pressing them open. Locate pieces three to six. So from right to left, we have the skirt front, then skirt middle front, skirt middle side front, and skirt side front. I labeled these with a piece of paper so that I wouldn't get mixed up. You'll notice that matching panels will match notches. If it doesn't, you're likely sewing the wrong two panels together. I'm removing one of the pairs for each panel, and then each panel is placed right sides together, notches matching, and then they are sewn together. After sewing the panels, overlock each seam to clean finish. Do the same for the other side and they should be mirrored. Then press the seam allowance to one side. The instructions recommend that you press the seams open. If you want to do that, you have to overlock the pieces individually first. I did this for style B because it requires that you top stitch each panel open, but of course this is optional. You can finish the seams however you choose for either style. Compare the front skirt to the front bodice and adjust gathers so that the lengths match. Then you can tie off the ends of the basing stitches and stay stitch the gathers in place. 
For the back skirt, layout pieces 7 to 10, so from left to right we have the skirt back, skirt middle back, skirt middle side back, and skirt side back. And note that the triple notch is the center back. Sew these panels together as we did with the front. Make sure you end up with two mirrored sides sewn together, and then you're going to match the center back triple notches to sew the center back seam. Press the seams to one side to complete. Style B is completed in the same way, but as mentioned for the front skirt, each panel is overlocked individually and the seams are pressed open with a top stitch on either side. Once complete, compare the back skirt to the back bodice and adjust gathers so that the lengths match. Then you can tie off the ends of the basting stitches and stay stitch the gathers in place. Next, stitch the skirt front to the skirt back at the side seams and overlock and press them. And if they're style B, you're going to press the seams open and top stitch. If you're sewing style B, it is at this point that you will apply the flange to the bodice. Take your flange, which is piece 15, and make sure you take note of the front and back end and also note the shoulder location dots. Fold the flange along the fold line and top stitch along the fold, also based along the seam line. I marked the guideline with a notch at the base and a few dots on the bodice. Make sure that you mark it properly. One of my markings was too far over and I had to take it out and fix it. With the right sides together, pin the flange to the bodice front and back. The fold of the flange should face toward the center of the bodice and the small dot on the flange should match at the shoulder seam. I found this really difficult to do neatly with the side seams intact. So, as I mentioned before, I removed the stitch in the side seam and it was much easier and neater. Stitch along the basing stitch and then again a quarter inch or six millimeters beside that initial stitch. Once this is done, trim the seam allowance close to the second line of stitching and then you can fold it right side out and top stitch close to the seam if you desire. After this, you can stitch up that side seam. Now back to style A and B. We're going to place the bodice right sides together with the assembled skirt matching centers, side seams, and notches, and pin in place. And then just sew that seam. I like to remove the gathering stitches next, but whether you remove the gathering stitches or not, the next step is to overlock the seam. Then press the seam towards the bodice. Or in the case of style B, I decided to press the seam down and top stitch along the skirt. Either way works great. On the interface collar, stitch 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters from the bottom notched edge. Then clip from the bottom edge to the stitch line at the inner dots. Press in the raw edge between the clips and trim to a quarter inch or six millimeters, something I actually forgot to do at the time. Place the collars right sides together and stitch between the large dots. Make sure you start and end with a sturdy back stitch that starts and ends exactly on the dots. Trim the seams and clip the corners, then turn out. Then you're going to understitch on the side of the collar that has no fusing. This means you're going to stitch the seam allowance to the collar close to the seam on the non-fused side. You won't be able to get to the very end of each collar point, so start about two inches from each end. And here you can see that the understitch is on the non-fused side of the collar. On the back bodice, clip the back neck along the curves to the stay stitch. This is so important for attaching it to the collar easily since it allows the curve to spread out a bit. Pin the collar to the bodice, starting at the center back and matching the dots. The first dot from the center will align with the shoulder seam. 
The next dot over will align with the corner dot on the front bodice, and this corner on the front bodice should be clipped to the stitching line. I didn't realize this until I started sewing. <laughs> And finally, the large dot at the end of the seam will line up with the final dot on the lapel of the front bodice. The instructions say to sew from the center out, so I did this. I started sewing at the center back and sewed from there to the shoulder dot. then to the corner dot and this is where I realized I needed to clip the corner of the bodice so that I could pivot to sew and then I'm sewing to the last lapel dot back stitching exactly at the dot and of course I'm going to do the same for the other side of the collar Trim the seams once you're done, and you can see here how it should have a nice sharp corner on the collar on the right side. Press the seams toward the collar, and now it's time to prep the facing. Take your front facing piece, piece 12, finish the unnotched curved edge and the top edge by folding in a quarter inch or six millimeters and stitch in place. Also reinforce the neck edge by sewing along the sew line. I misunderstood this at the time and stay stitch at a half inch or 30 millimeters, but it worked out fine. Then you're going to stitch down the facing edges. You can also do it from the underside, which is a bit easier. Then you're supposed to clip to the corner stitch, but as long as you do this as you're sewing it, as I did, it will turn out well. On the outside, pin the front facing to the dress matching the dots. Then sew down the edge and across the bottom. I started only with the lapel, making sure that I don't stitch over the collar at the lapel. And also make sure that you start with a sturdy back stitch. You can see here how close to the collar I got with my stitch and I did not sew over it or the seam allowance. The rest of the facing will align at the dots on the inner collar. Finish up the collar by pinning the facing to the inner collar as shown, matching the dots of course. And you can see that I have now clipped the corner to the stitching on the facing which will allow me to easily align it at the corner of the collar. Pin in place and then you're going to stitch it together. Do this for both sides, of course. Start from the top of the facing and sew to the corner dot. Pivot at the corner, moving any bulk out of the way so that you don't get puckers. And sew toward the final dot, keeping the seam allowance out of the way and ending with a sturdy back stitch at the lapel notch. You can see where the collar meets the lapel, there's a tiny gap, and that is totally normal. Before turning out the lapel, I trim the top down close to the stitch, and then I fold back the seam allowance and then turn out. This creates a nice corner. I trim the hem seam allowance and turn out in the same way. At this point, you can understitch along the edge of the facing with the seam allowance towards the facing. Start below the lapel notch. I start about an inch below it. The instructions say to start five inches down. And you won't be able to go to the very end at the hem, so you can stop about two inches from the bottom. Trim down the seam allowance in the collar lapel area, then match the collar seams with the seam allowance on the facing side and also press towards the collar. Then pin the facing along the shoulder seams and the back of the collar just over the outer collar seam line. 
The instructions say to stitch the collar area close to the seam and then tack the facing at the shoulder, but I like to first base this entire area in place and stitch the entire thing from the outside. This works best with matching thread. So on the outside, start at the shoulders and stitch right in the seam. This will catch the facing edge and it will be almost invisible. Then pivot and stitch the back area of the collar close to the seam edge, catching the edge of the collar underneath. And finish by pivoting and sewing the facing in the ditch of the seam at the end. It ends up looking very clean and it's very secure. Finish by pressing the collar and lapel area before we move on to the hem. Next, double fold the hem about a quarter inch or six millimeters each and stitch along the inner fold. Take your sleeves, which are for style A only, and press up the hem of the sleeve one and a quarter inch. Then fold in the raw edge a quarter inch or six millimeters. I like to do this before sewing the underarm seams together as it's much easier. Overlock the underarm edges and then sew right sides together. Make sure that both sleeve pieces are mirrored. Finger press open the seam and fold up your pre-pressed hem. Sew along the edge of the inner hem fold to finish the sleeve hem. Also sew an ease stitch with base length stitches along the cap of the sleeve between the notches. And I sew a double row. Turn the sleeve out and place the dress over it with the wrong side out and the armhole towards you. Match the armhole seam to side seam, match the back and front notches, and also match the center dot at the cap to the dress shoulder seam. Gather along the ease stitches to fit to the armhole. To distribute fullness evenly, slide fabric along the ease stitches until there are no puckers or tucks on the seam line. This can be a bit of a challenge. If you don't feel comfortable sewing it pinned, you can baste at half an inch or 30 millimeters to hold everything in place. And then you can stitch at the full seam allowance on the machine. You can either stitch with a bodice side on top and let the feed dogs help with the puckers at the sleeve cap or with the sleeve side on top. I like to sew from the sleeve side because I can see if I'm about to sew in a pucker and fix it before it happens. After this, trim the seam allowance, then overlock to finish. Turn it out and you can just finger press the seam towards the sleeve. To create a clean armhole finish for style B, you will need one package of a half inch or 13 millimeter single fold bias tape. I had some that I made from another project, so I used that. So start the tape at the underarm seam, leaving a bit of a tail. You can pin along the armhole and don't stretch the tape as you pin. I just pinned the first little bit and then took it to the machine to sew at 3 8 or one centimeter. My tape was a bit narrower, so I moved it in about an eighth or three millimeters from the edge and sewed it in place. When you get to the end, you're going to sew the tape ends together. So finish with a back stitch and take it out of the machine to sew those tails. Then trim the seam allowance and finger press it open and it's ready to fold to the inside of the garment. And then you want to trim the seam and clip the curves and then fold the bias tape to the inside of the garment. Pin in place all along the armhole and then you can sew along the folded edge from the inside to finish. The instructions say to baste along the edge and then top stitch from the outside of the garment, but I skipped that and just sewed from the inside. And this is the final result.
Now that the dress is almost complete, it's time to add buttonholes and buttons. Take your buttonhole guide, which is piece 14, and place along the finished edge of the dress. Place the top edge at the upper edge of the lapel on the right side of the dress, and that is your right when you're wearing it. Transfer the buttonhole markings to the garment. Then stitch your buttonholes. Now the center front line is three quarters of an inch from the edge. So if you double that, you can mark that from the edge of the left side of the dress and that's your left when it's on you. And then you can line up the right side of the dress edge along this guideline and mark the buttonhole location through the opened buttonholes. And you should mark it from the very end of the buttonhole. They should be about three quarters of an inch from the edge as this is the center front location. You will need 9 5 8 of an inch or 1.5 centimeter wide buttons. To sew on the buttons, I like to use a thicker thread. This is a Tex 80 as opposed to the usual 27 or 30. Then I double it, which helps make a stronger button shank and it's so much more efficient. Finish your dress by folding back the collar and gently pressing in place. And with that, your dress is complete. If you share your make on Instagram or TikTok, don't forget to tag me at Lydia Naomi Studio and also tag Nomi Patterns. I can't wait to see your makes. Thanks so much for watching.